In games that involve guns and bad guys, aiming is the most important skill. Many players will spend hundreds or thousands of hours developing that skill, but many people just download it from the internet. We call this aim assistance, software that effectively aims for you. As you may imagine, these programs make people considerably better at the game. It's completely unfair to legitimate players, but I find these exploits exceptionally interesting. So join me today as we discuss aimbots in the world of game hacking. Before we continue though, becoming a game hacker requires an intimate knowledge of maths, science, and computer science. And that's precisely why this video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online learning platform that is devoted to teaching difficult concepts in a fun, easy, and interactive way. They offer thousands of bite-sized lessons on topics ranging from everyday mathematics to literal quantum mechanics. With new lessons added monthly, Brilliant is the easiest and most effective way to discover and learn these complicated topics. Their courses are bite-sized and to the point while being accompanied by excellent visual assets. Each lesson is interactive and engaging. Instead of reading walls of text and struggling to understand things, Brilliant will have you clicking boxes, answering questions and dragging things around. Brilliant is a platform built for busy people. You can master concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. You can also learn anywhere at any time. So whether you're a student looking to ace your exams or a professional looking to upskill, you can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org forward slash CAS or by clicking on the link in the description down below. The first 200 of you will get 20% of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for listening and let's get back to the video. To truly grasp the concepts behind an aimbot, we must begin at a fundamental level. In many ways, video games are a simulation of the real world, and therefore they make extensive use of real world mathematics and physics. Most games consist of a three-dimensional coordinate system, which serves as the basis for positioning and movement in the game. For those of you who never went to school, a 3D coordinate system is a graph that consists of three separate planes. To place an object in 3D space, we need to describe the object's position on each of these dimensions. As you might expect, this requires three numbers. We refer to these numbers as X, Y, and Z respectively, and each number corresponds to a single dimension in space. When we use these three numbers together, we call it a vector. This leads to the next step of understanding aimbots, understanding how vectors work. A vector is a quantity that describes both magnitude and direction. In front of you is a two-dimensional graph, and if I decide to plot a point right here, we'll refer to that point as 4, 4, which means that it corresponds to 4 on the x-axis and 4 on the y-axis. Remember, this 4, 4 number is a vector, and vectors describe both magnitude and direction. So what on earth does that mean? Well, the magnitude of a vector, also known as length, is the distance between the origin of the graph and the point that we have plotted. The origin of the graph is simply 0, 0, which means that the magnitude of this vector is the length of a line from the middle of the graph to our dot. We can get the length of that line very easily with the help of our great friend Pythagoras. The hypotenuse, in this case, is always the length of the vector. Therefore, the square root of 4 squared plus 4 squared is the magnitude of our vector, which is about 5.7 if we round it up. This is where the direction of the vector becomes important. You see, if I were to now plot a point right here at position negative 4, 4, and then if I were to calculate its magnitude, we end up with the exact same answer as before. You see, this would be a massive issue if we could only describe vectors by length, because both of these points would be equal, even though they're clearly not. To make it worse, we can draw a circle around the origin of this graph with a radius of 5.7, and every single one of the infinite points on the circumference of the circle will have the exact same length. As we know, a circle consists of 360 total degrees, and therefore we can differentiate between our two points by saying they both have the same length of 5.7, but the first point is placed 45 degrees above the x-axis, and the second point is placed 135 degrees above the x-axis. Obviously, this entire example has been done on a 2D graph. In three dimensions, instead of requiring just one direction, we would require two directions, and that brings us to our next concept, view angles. View angles are a set of angles that determine exactly what your player is looking at. In other words, you have a vector that describes your position, and you have view angles that describe your orientation in the world. In a two-dimensional game, as we just discovered, it would only require a single angle for direction. But in a three-dimensional game, you'll need two angles. The first angle will correspond to the pitch of your character, and the second angle will correspond to the yaw. In the simplest sense, to create an aimbot, all you really have to do is set your view angles to angles that will make you look at an enemy player. 
All the enemies in the game will have a vector that describes their precise location. You will also have a vector that describes your own precise location. We're going to use this information and a little bit of trigonometry to calculate the view angles required to look at an enemy player. Once that's done, you can override your view angles with the new ones and voila, that's your aimbot. Obviously, before you get to this point, you need some sort of a project that lets you read and write the game's memory. You're also going to need to do some research or reverse engineering to find the entity list so that you can access the players that you want to auto-aim against. Just for your information, this is what a vector class might look like in code. This of course is C++, but a vector is just a few floating point numbers in a structure. A aimbot begins by looping through the entity list and finding a desirable player to aim lock onto. We usually have an FOV system otherwise known as field of view, which will find the closest player to your crosshair. Once the aimbot has found a suitable target, meaning that the player is alive, is an enemy, and is within the FOV range, we can begin our aimbot calculations. We start by subtracting our local position from the enemy's position. The resultant vector from this calculation is extremely important, as in doing this, we have changed the origin of the graph from the center of the world to our local player's position. This might sound a bit scary, but think about it like this. If the world is a 3D coordinate system, your position and the enemy's positions are relative to the world because that's the graph they exist on. When we subtract our local position from the enemy's position, we are left with a vector which begins at our local player and extends to the enemy player. This vector is now a directional vector, which describes the direction of the enemy from your player. Once we have this vector, we need to convert it into a pitch angle and a yaw angle that we collectively call view angles. For your reference, this is what view angles might look like in code, very similar to a two-dimensional vector. In fact, to the computer, they are exactly the same. This conversion from a vector into angles is basically the most complex thing about an aimbot. So let's start with the easier angle to get. Getting the yaw angle is as simple as getting the arc tangent of the x and y components of the vector. In this code, I'm using atan2, which is a normal arc tangent function, except we don't have to worry about which quadrant we're in because the function handles that for us. In the case of C and C++, this atan2 function only works in radians. So that's why you see a few conversions in this example. This this will return a value between negative 180 and positive 180 degrees. Getting the pitch angle is slightly different because we have two planes that run horizontally, those being x and y, whereas we only have a single plane running vertically, that being our z-axis. Therefore, we must construct a line to use with our z-axis, which is done by getting the hypotenuse of the x and y axes. The final calculation for the pitch is going to be the arc tangent of z and the hypotenuse of x and y. Once you have your new view angles, you can either write them into the game's memory, as is, for an obvious instant aim lock, or you can subtract your old view angles from the new ones to generate a delta angle. You could then divide the delta angle by a smoothing factor and add the result to your old angles to create a smooth aimbot. Unfortunately, not every game uses the same convention for their coordinate systems. Generally speaking, X will be your forward direction, Y will be left, and Z will be up. But this is not always the case. If your game uses a different convention, the math will be the same, but variables will be in different places. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the video. I highly appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out my Twitter and my Discord server down below. And as always, shout out to the following patrons for making this shit possible. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers and peace out.